Mr. Dittfenderfer has packed houses around Northern California with people looking for a safe place to live and stay clean. He advertises himself as a doctor for Harmony Mountain Treatment, providing sober living environments and counseling services. After hearing complaints, the I-team checked into his background. His doctorate is an online degree in life experience. He's not certified by the state for any form of counseling, and he has a criminal record, fraud and grand theft auto. Get down to his criminal. Hello? Richard. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? We were just going over your, you know, your, your basically your, your whole kind of scheme that you've got going, which, you know, in, 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 you know, con man to con man, brilliant, brilliant. I love how convincing you are. Like, I mean, like you're playing well, convincing it. Convincing because it's the truth. What is also the truth is that um, if you. All right. Hey, this is, look, I'm going to do this because there's a thing up here. Hey, this is Matt Cox, and I'm here with Art App Dan, and we are going to be doing, I'm going to say expose. We're going to be doing an expose on Dr. D. It's Dr. Uh, Defender, for, 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 and uh, uh, he's basically a career scammer. And uh, as far as I can tell, he's a career scammer. We're going to play some videos and it's just, he's just a real, real, I'm going to go with derelict uh, and, and just it's like super, it's amazing how long this guy has gotten away with running these, I'm going to say semi sophisticated scams that are, they're kind of, I don't know. They're not really short. They're not really short scams. But they're not long, long scams either, and they're not super profitable. And I think that's probably why he's able to get away with it, even though he's been investigated over and over again. And Dan's got a, a great perspective on it and knows him personally and has his own story. And it's going to be a really interesting podcast. So check this out. Matt, how you doing today, my man? Great. I got a, I, I put on this shirt and I it looks it. It looks great. Oh, am I sweating? Is that is that Jess's shirt? Sweat? No, it's not Jess's shirt. It's a, it's one of those stretchy shirts, you know. But I'm just jealous. I, I'm just jealous because I don't fill out a shirt as well as you, Matt. But it, it it but it looks great. It looks great. And and I um. Yeah, this guy. Yeah, I was gonna say you you described him as something I forget, but he, I would a skeezy is a good word. Yeah, career slime ball for sure. Well, I'm, yeah, I, I mean, really, because like the the scams. I'm I'm sorry, I was just thinking when you were thinking like it's not, they're not huge scams. No, they're just they're they're but they are because the people he's doing it to, and we're going to look at his website in a minute with the well, his I mean, services. Dollar, dollar amount. I mean, money wise. Right. No, no, they're not. They're for a couple hundred bucks here and there. Um, well, actually, thousands. There's there. What do you? I mean, there are thousands of dollars. Right? But they're not yeah, hundreds yeah. of thousands. Well, each person he gets, he'll, he, so we'll, we'll talk about him. And I met this guy initially back in uh, 2018. Uh, I was looking for a chemical dependency professional because, as you guys know, I, I'm a prison consultant. We help people get prepared to go into the prison system. And sometimes people don't have enough detail from their substance abuse issues, and they need a substance abuse professional, chemical dependency professional, to come in and do an evaluation with them to create a report that can be given to the prison to kind of maybe – fill in some of the blanks that they may have about someone's history with drug abuse or alcohol abuse or prescription pills, whatever it is. <clears throat> I came across uh, Dr. Richard Diffenderfer through doing some Google searches or somebody referred him to, I can't remember. He seemed to come off legit initially. He has like a radio station and he's doing all these things to help people. So he and I had a couple conversations and it went pretty well. So I decided to uh, to test him with one of my clients. One of my clients was getting ready to go to prison and needed a, a evaluation done. And his price was pretty fair. So we went ahead and did the evaluation. When the evaluation came back, it was definitely, you could tell there were some red flags right away, like spelling and grammar. I get it. Not everybody's, you know, an ace when it comes to grammatical issues, but the spelling and grammar was just horrendous. So when I sent it back to him, he's like, oh, I forgot to turn on spell check and went back and forth. But eventually sent me a report that we ended up not even using. I had to hire another chemical dependency professional to, to move forward. And I just kind of stopped working with him. And then <laughs> a month later, 
um, one day I, I get a, oh, I get a phone call from uh, my bank, TD Bank, and it says there's suspicious activity on your account. So I wouldn't even have known it if this hadn't happened. And I pressed one to hear the activity. And this guy went in and he dinged my card two different times, one for like 500, one for, I think, like $1,000 additional money. When, so when he ran my credit cards, um, did you call him? Oh, of course I called him. Uh, he, he didn't answer the phone. He was responding by text and I still have all of the text messages and all of the emails going back and forth. And he told me, I called you for three weeks and you didn't return my calls. This is monies that you owed me. So I'm thinking this guy, is he really, at first I thought maybe he was just confused. So I sent him a copy of the invoice. He sent me the money that was paid. There was clearly nothing else that was owed. Then I get a call from one of my, the, the client that I had referred him, the first client that I sent him on a, on a test. And I was very transparent with my clients. I said, look, I've never used this guy before. I don't know much about him. Uh, here's his online presence. He's got a radio station. He's an older gentleman. He was like 67 or 68 at the time. So he just seemed like somebody that, you know, like a grandpa kind of a guy. And, uh, my client, you know, went through the process and of course the report was garbage. So we had to end up spending like an additional $1,500 to get the report done the right way. But then my client goes to prison and I get a text message or an email, or maybe it was a phone call from his wife and said, Hey, Dan, do you know what these charges are for? And I am like, what charges are you referring to? And she sends me a, a, a screenshot. He charged another, I think it was two or $3,000 to my client's credit card the day after he went in prison, waited for my client to go in prison, then dinged his credit card. Nice. Yeah. So <laughs> you know, like just st like straight grimy dude. Um, so I text him on it and he, and uh, uh, we'll, we'll call the client John for all intents and purposes. That's not his real name, but we'll call him John. He said, well, I'm on John's core links and John authorized me to do this. He's not going to like it when he, he exact words where he's not going to like it when you hear about, when he hears about this, Dan, um, uh, I was like, here's about what? So I called his wife and I said, well, he says that at, uh, John gave him permission to run the credit card. She's like, absolutely not. So we go through this whole thing round and round and round. And he just starts telling me, he goes, I'm, I've contacted RDAP and I've done all about your sham. Um, yeah, just I'm just like, dude, I don't care. So I called the police. At first, I called the police where he lives, which I believe he lives in uh, Las Vegas. His online addresses and his Facebook address, it all says California, but and his real name is not even Richard, I found out. It's like Rick or Ricky or some shit like that. He's, he's got like a million different aliases. And the police department in, in Las Vegas said, well, we can't do anything because you live, at this time I live in Washington State, said you live in Washington, so you got to contact your police department in Washington. So I contact Washington and, and getting, getting somebody to like move on this was really, really hard. I had to stay on it, stay on it, stay on it. Uh, I disputed the charges and I won the dispute, but I was still going after him for, for identity fraud because he was doing this under false pretenses, um, running people's credit cards without authorization. So finally, I got this detective that was kind of interested in it, and I showed the detective. And then we found a story about this guy where he'd got in trouble years ago uh, for doing some fraudulent activity where he was renting houses and then putting basically renting a house with like five or six bedrooms and then renting the rooms out is sober living houses to these individuals right. he's charging want, i'm sorry do you want to show the uh do you want to show video? the video yeah let's show the video well, how so, much was he charging too it was a couple grand wasn't it grand? yeah some people you know first last and security um family members if anybody's ever been through any kind of a treatment or detox or anything like that these sober houses especially for something that's halfway decent in a decent area for just for a room it can be five hundred to a thousand dollars in some cases a week, and they want you know a certain amount of money up front. So you got people that are desperate to fix their lives and get their life on track. And then uh, this is where Dr. Richard came in and kind of destroyed some people. He served over a decade in federal prison for bank fraud, and he still owes the government six million in restitution. But he's good for it. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crime, but when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. But they did a nice clip on him on a, on a, on a news station that we pulled the video from that we're going to share with you guys right now. Dr. D, he's at it again. More clients are getting evicted from his sober houses in Northern California. Yeah, the ABC 7 News I team has also learned Dr. D is now under criminal investigation for possible theft and fraud. 
Dan Noyes is here with an update. Dan. Ama and Dan, I first investigated Dr. D after, after his clients in Sonoma County came to me for help. And now I've heard from his clients in the Central Valley that they're getting evicted too. Richard Diffenderfer has packed houses around Northern California with people looking for a safe place to live and stay clean. He advertises himself as a doctor for Harmony Mountain Treatment, providing sober living environments and counseling services. After hearing complaints, the I-team checked into his background. His doctorate is an online degree in life experience. He's not certified by the state for any form of counseling, and he has a criminal record, fraud and grand theft auto. Now the I-team has confirmed he's under investigation again, this time in Rohnert Park. We have two active investigations uh, occurring right now of reports of theft and fraud. Those investigations began after his clients got evicted. They blamed Dr. D for taking their money but not paying rent. The I-team has learned Dr. D is also far behind on payments for two homes in Modesto. Thirteen people lived in this sober house on Mabel Avenue, but they have to find somewhere to move. So we started worrying, well, is he doing the same down here? And he did, uh, taking money from people, knowing that they weren't going to have a place to live. This client doesn't want to show his face or use his name as he tries to move on with his life. I'm out actively looking daily uh, on my computer all the time, trying to find a new residence. This is an enormous strain on people who are at a vulnerable point in their lives. I spoke with one woman in Rona Park living in her car for the first time after giving Dr. D her last money for rent. That was her last money she had. As a result, for the first time in her life, she is on the streets because of you. That's not true. How do you feel about that? That is not true. Diana Schwen owns houses in Modesto and Rohnert Park, but says she has lost so much money from Dr. D's unpaid rent that she now has to sell. I just feel really bad, you know, for the people that I've had to put out because of him. You know, but I had no choice. The owner of this house in Modesto says Dr. D owes him $13,000, but the owner has made arrangements with a sober house manager, allowing the tenants to stay. She's also bringing over some of Dr. D's former clients from the other Modesto home. I talked to the owner and had them to, uh, turn the house over to me so I can help people out because they wouldn't have nowhere to go. They'd be out on the street. That's after Diffenderfer's wife, Kate, texted her about the eviction, saying, you must inform clients that they have to find a place to move to. It will no longer be Harmony Mountain treatment due to financial collapse. I reached Dr. D's wife by phone. She declined to go on camera, but confirmed he is out of business and that she hasn't seen him since our first report. Dr. D has not returned my calls for a follow-up interview. And if you have a tip, call 1-888-40-I-TEAM or send me an email through the I-TEAM page at ABC7 News. Great. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts seeing that, Matt, if... if if this happened to like your mother or somebody that, or brother or somebody you were trying to put into recovery and this happened, how would you feel? Is it, you know, it, it's what's, <laughs> you're so serious. Like my view of this is it's like, God, if, if my scumbaggery level was just a little bit, <laughs> a little bit lower, like this is, this is semi total scumbag guy, but semi-brilliant i mean it's like it doesn't take any real skill well it, i'm sorry it does take some skill to pull this off so how would i feel if it was my mom or my brother or my sisters I, obviously i mean the guy's a piece of garbage you know i know that i mean we you know i could sit here and say oh i'd be furious and pissed off but what i'm thinking of is how this guy keeps doing this and yeah. how did he pull off the scam think about it he set up a website calls himself a doctor rents out a place, convinces you it's a sober living home, you pay a couple thousand up front, and then he never makes another payment. Like As soon as he gets it full, he stops paying and starts. he could start fighting the evictions. I'll bet you you could get this, you could hold the, the evictions off for a sober living home months, three, four months, and how much is he bringing in? I mean, if he's, if it's, let's say it's, let's say it's four bedrooms. I don't think he's that bright though, to be honest. I, mean, I think, I think he gets the money. 
and doesn't even try to fight it. He just takes the money. And I mean, he might even be one of these, 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 uh, nut jobs that has good intentions when he does it. He just doesn't follow through. He doesn't have any paperwork and he, he just gets in over his head every single time he tries something. Um, well, I mean, that could be true, but then how come we've got multiple scams? This isn't the first scam. It's true. It's true. I mean, and how come he bills you for, you know, a thousand dollars and then rebills you for 1500 and then rebills this guy's wife for, for more money. I mean, he's a scumbag. And he'll just, he's kind of like a kid that you catch the kid stealing and you catch the kid with the candy in his pocket. And it's like, you've got the candy in your pocket. No, I don't. It's like, I can see it right there. I, I don't have right. any candy. He just, he sticks to his lie and doubles down when he's completely red-handedly caught. Uh, and I think that's what kind of makes this guy interesting because look, you and I've both been through our own troubles. Our, so it's not about coming after somebody who, who made a mistake. Um, but he, his mistakes go back into the eighties. He was, there's, if you, if you Google him and we'll pull up his report in a second, uh, he had an issue with these, these prostitutes that he was paying and he bought both of them a car with fake checks. He wrote checks to a dealership and got charged with grand theft auto because he left with the cars for these strippers. I mean, the guy he's, he's, he's very, very, uh, he's willing to take a lot of risk. And I think there's just really been no real consequences have come his way. So he's just kind of gotten away with it for, you know, the last 70 something years of his life. Well, I mean, and, and so, okay. So, but he, and he keeps doing it. He keeps yeah. getting these and he runs these little scams and he gets himself 5,000 or $10,000 and he moves on to the next scam. He gets himself five or $10,000. And like, we live in a we live in a world now though where people are so hurt and so like desperate and down and depressed where you cross the wrong person now you know over 20 30 bucks you could end up dead you, somebody could show up at his house and club him to death i mean yeah, yeah but can you track him down i mean i understand that news organization did but how many different aliases has he got how many different websites are there well the good thing is is when we pull up his report here in a second which oh also by the way guys if anybody has had any run-ins with dr d or dr richard Durfender. Uh, I created a, here, I'll pull it up just so everybody can see it real quick. We have a Google form uh, right here. Let me... So if anybody wants to, uh, if, if anybody's having issues with him and, and you don't know what to do, I would love to put together. There's a link in the description of this video where you can click and you can fill this out, hit submit. It'll come back to us and it's real, real basic. Um, but yeah, so you make definitely, if you've had any issues with him, do yourself a favor and, report it create a police report go online click on this link and submit the information if you've spoken to any officers you have a police report give it to us and i'm going to compile as much information i can to try to uh to try to bring this guy down is is i, I i'm honestly kind of excited about this you know it's it's been a rough year so this guy kind of stepping into the line of fire with his stupidity has just made it kind of like a, a nice area to to expunge the the, the aggression what, what was i'm sorry go ahead you have go ahead sorry. well i was gonna say what was the other thing where you said there was a somebody was suing him and they contacted you yeah so uh, one of his so it's a current they were going to come on today they were going to join us but we decided to keep them quiet right now because it's an existing client of his or a patient whatever you want to call them who's already found out about his fraudulent ways already knows that they're being scammed hasn't paid him a whole lot of money but talked spoke to him even after he knows he knows that there's a basically a mole that it's gonna make him very paranoid about who he deals with right now so yeah we have we have an inside mole who's currently working with him that's trying to extract more information to uh to bring dr d to the ground uh, i was just thinking you know it's like i wonder like there was a kid and i want to say he was in tampa he put up literally put out like a shingle said he was a doctor was this the black kid yeah. yeah, he did it twice. I think. Yeah, <laughs> he's like sixteen. It's like Doogie Howser. <laughs> he's charging people money. Yeah, MD. This, I don't understand how anybody didn't like. You didn't know the kid was fifteen years old. He looks like he looks like Spud Webb. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't. I just. I. I don't. I don't know. I. I don't get these people. You know, there was a scam that was ha that's happening. I want to. It was somewhere in Florida, where. I, and I'm going to kind of dissect the scam. Like, I don't know exactly how the person was doing it, 
you know, they make it sound like they pretended to be, or they, they set up a fake title company. They were accepting money. They were, you know, they were selling, they were taking down payments for houses. And what really I think was happening was they were maybe renting out an Airbnb for a week, putting it on, on, um, you know, putting it up for, for sale. People were coming to see it saying, oh my gosh, what a great deal. They were accepting like $5,000 down and cat or $5,000 down depositing that money in a, in their account. And then, and they did this, you know, multiple times and ended up getting, I'm going to say, whatever, I don't know what it was, a couple hundred thousand dollars, let's say I could be off on that. But yeah, they got a couple hundred thousand dollars. And what, what kills me is like, all you have to do to pull this off is put it on Craigslist and a couple other, you know, free, uh, free types, uh, free websites and call if you could call a, a, a real estate agent or put it on, um, put it, put it up on, uh, um, for sale by owner and open a corporation in a corporate bank account in somebody's name. Like it was like, it's nothing to pull this scam, that scam off. Like it's very little. And yet they were, they, these two women did it that were in their early twenties and they both pulled it off and made several hundred thousand dollars with very little experience. And it's, yeah. it's no, it took, takes no skill, no money up front, and no skill. And there's a lot of those scams. That's why when people are like looking for like rental properties or whatnot, or, or, you know, rent so high right now, everybody's scrambling, trying to find a place to live. They're going on Craigslist and they'll find this nice house. That's just, the price is so ridiculously low that that, that should be the red flag, but people will call it up and um, they're like, well, if you want to go drive by it, let me know what you think. And if you like it, we can get you to move in right away. I'm out of town. I'm out of the country till Tuesday, but if you want to give me a deposit, I'll, I won't, you know, I'll hold it for you. And they take a deposit of a few hundred bucks to a thousand bucks, whatever they think they can get and come to find out they have no actual ties to this house at all. It's just, just complete fraud um, yeah. or the house isn't even for sale or rent, but yeah, you're right. Those they're, they're dime a dozen and it's uh it's, it's buyer beware. There's, we've probably never lived in a greater time of, of like the, the era of cons because it's so easy now to, to mask your IP, to mask your internet, to mask who you are and just do people left and right. And there's a yeah. lot of people out there, you know, that will fall for these things, especially when you're in a desperate situation. Anonymity. Yeah. You can, you can, you can just disappear. Yep. He built some of the nation's largest banks out of an estimated $55 million because 50 million wasn't enough. And 60 million seemed excessive. He is the most interesting man in the world. I don't typically commit crimes. But when I do, it's bank fraud. Stay greedy, my friends. Support the channel. Join Matthew Cox's Patreon. You know, what I was wondered was how they were getting the money. Like, are you getting a couple grand cash, which is weird? Or are you saying, okay, write the title? Because they said they impersonated a title company. So they were probably saying, you can deposit this money in the title company. Now, I knew a guy... It, it, it's funny because I knew a guy that was running a, a scam. His scam was actually, it was actually, he's, he was a straight con man, guy from New York. And anyway, he basically, the way he was opening up bank accounts was he would go out to clubs, meet some girl. He had a lot of money and he'd say, hey, I'll give you a couple grand if you'll go open a bank account. Yeah. And they would be like, what? He'd go, yeah, yeah, this is what I do. And he would tell them, he had some kind of thing where it wasn't necessarily fraud or maybe they knew it was a fraud, but whereas like people are going to deposit money in your account, you're going to get this much of the money. You'll get, you know, 20% of the money. And in about two months from now, we're going to close down the account. And then you can just say, you didn't open the account. Really? Yeah. Trust me. I do it all the time. Now, of course, really the FBI shows up and you're of course, a part of done. But like these women, he did this for years. Nobody ever knew who he was. And what he was doing was he was calling people. Listen to this. Did you ever do timeshares? Uh, I didn't do them, um, but well, I did for a day, but it seems so shady that yeah. I, I left. And it's, you're talking about the scam where it's the, if you're trying to get rid of your timeshare, we got a buyer. 
Yeah. Oh, there's, there's tons of them. There's yeah. tons of them. Like there's tons of them. Like maybe you own, we have a buyer or maybe they're trying to get you into it, or maybe they're trying to, they're, they're going to, um, th there's all kinds of different the, scams. The big one that I saw that really became like mainstream media was people trying to get rid of their timeshares and they would get a phone call saying, Hey, we've got a buyer. They've already made a deposit. Uh, we're ready to move on this. All you got to do is pay some like taxes or whatever. It's like $1,500 in taxes. And then closing will be in like three days. And, Really, there was no buyer. There was none of that. They were just collecting money. And then these same people that were running that scam would go back around and say, hey, we can help you fight your bank to get the money on a chargeback. Yeah. So they were, they were going back and around. Yeah. Well, so here, here's what here's what happened. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, they, they are right for this. Listen to what this guy did. This guy went and got people that owed money on timeshares. Like maybe they had a timeshare. They never sold it. And the um, like they just stopped paying. You know, they stopped right. paying and they were in collections or something for the timeshare. So he gets a list of them. He calls up. He actually does the spoof app so that it shows he's calling from like like Hilt, the Hilton or something, which is, you know, whatever the whatever, the, wherever the timeshare was. Let's say it's Hilton Gardens. So he, he actually would you would he would call you from a phone number that showed up saying Hilton Gardens. And so he would call these people up and, and they, they hadn't paid their they hadn't paid their 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 monthly dues on the timeshare in four years. So he'd call them up and he'd say, hey, listen, you had a timeshare. Here's the um, here's you know, here's the the plaza or the the um, the project you were in. They go, yeah, it's on this. Here's the address. This is you. They go, yes, it's me. Look, I don't have the money. They go, no, 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 you don't understand. I, I understand you're behind on your on your dues, but we actually have someone who's where the, the, the whole complex is selling. So I'm not trying to get your dues. What I'm trying to say is that there were, you were never properly like foreclosed on, let's say. So you're right. still on the title. You meet this guy, just a guy that was in prison. I, yeah, I met him in prison and he was so shysty, man. He was so shysty. And, and so what he would do is he would, they, so he talked to these people and he'd say, look, here's the thing. Um, your 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 title you know your your timeshare sold and your portion of the timeshare is you know it's not much it's like forty two thousand dollars and they would be like really he'd go yes um and we can get you that we have a closing set up at this time however and, and we can take the taxes we can take all this stuff out of that but you have to pay the the back whatever it is the, the back um, monthly right. dues. And it, it and, and then he would come up with some number. It's you know, fifteen thousand, whatever it was. You know, sometimes it was five thousand dollars, six thousand dollars, whatever it was. He had a, a way to come up with. It was just enough that they could pay it. And so what they would do is they would write him a check for like seven thousand dollars or four thousand, whatever it came to, and he would deposit that money in the girl's bank account. So they give her twenty percent and. Give her, but keep in mind, he's getting people every single day. He's calling a hundred people a day and he's getting like five or six people a day that are paying. Right. And so then they would keep, and he, and he, here's what he did, which was great as far as a scam, you know, scammers point of view, he maintained the scam. Most people get the money and they run. They stop answering the phone after that. Like I've got, I've got the money <laughs> and they run away like a fucking idiot. It, what he did was this. The closing is scheduled for this time. And if they said anything like, you said it was closing at this time, he would say, no, I know I did. But, you know, there's problems with the developer, blah, blah, blah. You can call the title company. And he had another phone number that they could call like the title company. And the title company would say, yes, you're listed among, you know, there's 260 people in the complex. You're one of them. We do have a closing schedule. It was scheduled for on Tuesday, but it's not happening Tuesday. Now it's happening on whatever day it is, right? So they would do a whole thing. And, and so he could keep these people off for a month or two. And what eventually happened is that way he could load up as much money in this girl's account. She's giving him the money in cash. She's the only one on record and she doesn't know his name because he met her in a, in a club. She has a cell phone and that's it. So she's got a cell. So when the, when the police show up two months later to say, Hey, 
you, you had two hundred thousand dollars run through your account for this this um for this scam and she you know she's like um oh, what i didn't know it was a scam uh, uh even if she even though she probably did know it was a scam she would then turn around and they'd say well who is it she, oh it's his name is mike mike well these people right, said it's mike who tom. he goes by tom by mike by john right. or whatever well do you know where no i have his phone number give his phone number what phone number is oh we already have that phone number that's this that's one of his scam Man, numbers. We, we had a client do the the exact same scam he rented out a small industrial hardware like uh office kind of <clears throat> had a bunch of guys in there on burner phones and would go around to like homeless people convince them to open up bank accounts in their name basically was telling them you're going to get in trouble at some point um but you're homeless and this is a lot of money that we're getting and what he was doing it was either stocks or options or currency or for, forex they were calling, getting people to invest into, uh, and then the, when they would wire the money, it would go into these these random homeless people's accounts. The person would get, you know, five hundred bucks, a thousand bucks. They'd go pull the money out every day and give the money to him. And he was doing. I don't even know if he ever got caught. Uh, he could still be doing this to this day. But yeah, he, there, there's a lot of people out there doing that exact same kind of fraud. Yeah, he, uh, I I just. So, I mean, that's what I'm thinking about this guy. Like, where are those checks going? Are they really going to him? Yeah, because he's so. The problem is he's not licensed to he's not. So let's look at his website, because if you see what he advertises on his website, he doesn't have. Uh, let's see. Here he is. Um, I'm thinking he's not a doctor, right? Like he's not a doctor. Said. He's like a doc. He's got a doctor of life experience from some <laughs> online cereal box uh, thing. So if you look at it, so here's his website. If we look at his services, can you see that okay? Yeah, that's great. Um, so here's the services: court law help, opioid addiction interventions, and it says right in there. He talks about you know what he's able to do. Um, and look at if you court help. Uh, here, let's read this one: no bail, no jail. Do you have a loved one in? <laughs> no bail jail doc richard can help get them out doc richard has helped hundreds get no bail jail by mental health evaluations and substance abuse evaluations by proposing a treatment protocol for that individual to go to court it usually takes about a week and wow they're out of jail and stay out following the treatment protocol it, it, this is how he really talks he really talks you know just me reaching out to him he'll respond and go dan you and your full of lies you're a moron and you need to get help. It's like, dude, you're sitting here. You're, you're maintaining this fucking lie. You've already been caught, dude. He's like, the judge told me that you were full of shit and she didn't believe anything you said. This is what he's telling me. The judge didn't believe anything that I said, but yet <laughs> right here is like, like you're going to call up and talk, like he's going to talk to a federal judge. Like, you know, it, it, it's, it's, no, he ridiculous. said it was in court. Cause I didn't have to go to court for this. The, the state, the state of uh, Washington took it over. So I didn't go to court. Oh, when I you really didn't him? know did what the him? outcome say it again. Wait, wait, what are you talking about? What did you just say? I didn't hear you. Did you sue him? Like what, what? No, what? I, so when, when he, when he ran my credit card twice right. and then he did it to my client, uh, my client was in prison. So it was real hard for my client to fight it. I actually filed charges against him, like, like, uh, criminal charges for um identity theft so spokane followed through with it and i went and sat with the prosecutor and uh, his attorney came and it was it was me his attorney the prosecutor and some witness and they came we met at the at one of the state buildings in spokane county and his attorney was just he was basically mimicking everything that his clients that richard diffenderfer had told him and i about lost my shit in the room i was like look man you're representing a fucking scumbag who is doing this. I, I don't need to sit here and defend myself. All the proof is right here. So the prosecutor took it over from there. And th this was, so you can see here, his charges was count one theft, obtain, I don't know what that means, but if you Google it, you'll, you'll see. Um, and when we look up his, his record that I pulled, but this is actually, um, right now I'm on website, uh, County of Spokane's court system. So that's the, this was in 2000. 822 so was that august of 2022 and he ended up taking a plea agreement let's see where's that at uh, 
guilty plea he did in 2019. So it went almost a whole year before he finally pled guilty. But he ended up pleading guilty to two counts of uh, uh, identity fraud. And then he got a suspended 12-month sentence where as long as he stays out. That's his problem is they keep giving him these fucking suspended sentences. And he gets off of probation and then he starts doing it again. But he tried to tell me, he said, yeah, the case got thrown out. And the judge said that she thinks you're an idiot and that you're a liar. I'm like, sure. I'm sure the judge said, I think Mr. Wise is an idiot and a liar. Right. Um, and yet, yet the docket says something completely different. It's got it's it's got it's, it's got a signature on there pleading guilty, it, right. just like in the federal court when it says, I understand that I'm doing this on my own free will and accord. Uh, and all of this is in the link of the description of this video. So if anybody wants to pull this up, because I have a feeling there's going to look, there's a lot of people out there that are, he's he's taken advantage of which we found you and I, I think we looked at uh, uh, like pissed consumer. If anybody's ever been there before um, he's all, he's all over pissed consumer. Um, oops, sorry, Matt. didn't mean to cut you off there. Mm -hmm. So this is a recent one. This one was, when was the date on this one? This was uh that was June. I think there's another one up here. Here we go. This is August 24th of this year. You know, these are people, this man is not honest. He takes your money and gives you nothing. Uh, I hope he ends up in prison one day. You know, so there's there's another one. Um, he lied about helping me with my legal matters and constantly lying about everything. He 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 claimed my money order was lost in the mail. Found out later he had been cashed by him. He's a racist. Just all kinds of things. And there's also some stuff online on his personal report that there's potential activity that he might be a sex offender. Uh, that I can't verify, so I don't want to call him a sex offender. But there is potential sex offender activity. But these are all from this year, dude. These are all from 2022. He'll say they're all fake. Um, fake doctor. You know, he's not a real doctor. He's, he's just as phony as they come. And the problem is, is he's taken advantage of people that are in a real bad situation. There's people that are in court that have to get evaluations done. And sometimes the court, don't they don't pay for it. So you're out there looking for an evaluation and you come across this crackpot you know, the charlatan scam artist who's like, yeah, I'll do it for you, um, pays him some money and he doesn't produce the report or he produces a report that just makes no sense. I wish I had the report that he did for my client. I can't find it. Uh, it, it was so bad. The font was like the biggest giant black fat font I'd ever seen. It looked like something that a fifth grader would put together for like, mom, look what I made hanging on the fridge. And he's, oh, I, that was a mistake. The guy's just a complete con artist and he'll sit here and tell you to your face that no none of this is true somehow we we mysteriously the internet we convinced the internet to show all of this uh i just don't know if anything's going to be done about it well i mean it you know you've heard, i'm sure you've heard me say this like if you know if if, if over the course of a year you know 10 different people say you're a scumbag like you're probably a scumbag like you know it's you know what i'm saying like it, it's so this guy like he, everybody's saying he's a he's a con artist he's the con you're a con artist like you know what how can you what is this <laughs> he's got a radio station but he 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 just sent me a message yesterday he said you should go listen to my radio station dan and see what i'm all about you try to go down on his radio station that he sends me and Everything on his radio station has been has been removed. Uh, he says he owns this radio station, which I do believe him because services. If you there's a phone number somewhere on here, and if you call the phone number, it rings to his personal phone. Um, this the, the, and that's his wife, Kate Kate McFadden. She's another charlatan. She's right up there with him. Um, she better be careful. We're gonna do a video on her next. If this woman had any marbles left up in the noggin. She would just bail on this guy and run for the hills. But uh, he's probably some kind of a, he's such a fucking liar. Maybe he's got her bought and sold too. I don't know. How do you like that mug though? Look at that. Isn't that just the best picture you've ever seen? I'm trying to think. Doc Richard. Uh, I, I want to say. Um, God. But yeah, we own we own the URL, uh, drricharddiffenderfer.com. We bought that yesterday. 
So this video, we're going to put it on there. And then uh, I'm going to, I have a blogger that does blogs for me. So I'm just going to have them go out and find all the information we can on this guy and just create blogs maybe once a week. So when people do a search for him, uh, they, they find it. It'd be great to be able to just put everybody in one. The problem is, is you've got somebody complaining in one state and they go to their local police and nothing happens. You got somebody complaining in another state, they go to their local police, nothing. There's no system that's showing that this guy is just out there like dinging people left and right. Um, his address is. I'm sorry. What about his, uh, did you, geez, did, did you go to his, uh, his LinkedIn page? Uh, his LinkedIn page. So you're on it now, Doctor uh, Doctor Richard Diffender, behavior health therapist, Doctor D's Harmony, whatever. Yeah, that's his business. That's his supposed business name. Um, oh, there he is. Here we'll pull up his because yeah, that I saw that on here. Let's go back to that. I mean, he. I don't know, Dan. He looks very established. <laughs> 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 education university of california berkeley i mean he's i'm sure he's going to tell me that this report is fake as well um or he'll tell whoever whoever says oh, i saw a video online so this report is ordered uh yes yesterday right that's a, wait when was the 13th what's today matt what uh today is the 13th yesterday was the 12th okay so yeah this was so i i ordered it yesterday got created today so this is from truth finder so you can go to truthfinder.com you can do like background reports and whatnot and this is uh this is all his information. So Richard Lee Diffenderfer. Oh, these are his. A, sorry, we got are, another one here too. Uh, uh, the um, yeah, there's there's several articles about him. Bad ones. I mean, this is from 2016. It's it's the same thing. It's a that uh, he's 66 years old. Who he he did not have a state license to offer drug rehabilitation. This is in 2000. This is in 2016. Okay. Yeah. So very August. recent. Uh, we got another one. We got something else here. Uh, pissed consumer. Uh, that you already looked that one up, right? Uh, yeah, I think that's yeah. That was the August saw. one. Yeah, yeah. He's got. And he'll just say it's it's all it's all it's all a conspiracy to get him, because he he plays the he's a master of divinity. If you look here, it, education type master certificate in Montessori math, and then a master of divinity. Uh, nothing, nothing on here shows he has any education of any master's degree and any doctorates of anything other than a complete doctor of bullshit. Um, wow. And he keeps going on and on. We got to call him. You want to call him? Yeah, I want to call him. Can I call him from my number? It'll come up. Yeah. Um, well, I've got his, you want me to give you his number? Um, well, I got a, I got a phone number. Is it, is it the seven seven five number? Um, hold on, let me check. That's one phone number, and then I got a coordinator's phone number. Here, I'll give it to you right now. I got it. Lives right. in Nevada. Let's see, where's, where's our friendly doctor? Do we want to give it out over the thing? Or are you going to text? Uh, it? No, I'm going to give it out. It's public information. It's, it's on his website. It's the same number on his website. So it's not like we're, uh, which seven five? Yeah, what's it end in? Uh, two zero. No, uh, seven seven five six eight three one one zero eight. Wait a minute, seven seven five six eight three. Yeah, one one zero eight. And this is all public information. This phone number is on his website. Nice. Put him on speaker if you get him on. God, I've got him. This would be great. Should say Matt Cox. He's not going to answer. Here, we're going to get down to his criminal. Hello. Oh, wow. Richard. Hi. Hey, how are you doing? Listen, my name is Matthew Cox. Uh, I am a uh, friend of... Uh, Ardap Dan or Dan Wise. I'm pretty sure you know who that is. Uh, you know, I didn't know his last name until you mentioned it. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. Ardap Dan. Um, we're doing a, you're, 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 by the way, you're being recorded right now. You're on a, um, a podcast we're doing. We were just going over your, you know, your, your basically your, 
your whole kind of scheme that you've got going, which, you know, in, 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 you know, con man to con man, brilliant, brilliant. Um, I'm just wondering like, like how I, I had some questions that Dan couldn't answer. Like, for instance, like when, pe when people are writing you checks to get into to your, your, um, these, these sober living houses, like, how are you cashing those checks? Like, do they write them directly to you? They wrote them. I was an LLC. You, oh, you and have that, Okay. And that was um, nine years ago. Nine. I, ha I don't have. I don't have. I haven't had any um, any um, sober living houses for nine years. Oh, I thought. The, uh, well, that was 2016. The last report I saw was 2016. No, 2015. I closed them in, in May 20th of 2015. Okay, well, that's seven years, but that's fine. Not everybody's great at math. Um, so I, I have a, another question for you. Like, how, how are you getting these people? So just is it just word of mouth, or is it also from LinkedIn and your website that you're getting people? Uh, no, they were referred by the courts, and the first month was paid by the courts. They were put there, you know, these people were sent there. They had been convicted of crimes, and they were sent there in the promise that they wouldn't, uh, they didn't want to go to jail. So they came there, and the reason that they were thrown out, and because they refused to stay sober, and uh, that was a condition by the courts of their uh, of the mercy that the court had in putting them there instead of in uh, prison. But that's that's not what uh, that's not what the the articles that I read said they, well, they, they were incorrect. They were incorrect. They were, they were, the articles were actually press releases uh, from the um, press releases from the prosecutor. They weren't real articles. Um, I love that you sound that was settled a long time ago. Something that was settled a long time ago. Looking and honestly, I, I, I honest, yeah. honestly, listen, honest, just, it's just, you know, me and you just, just shooting the shit, bro. Honestly, I love how convincing you are. Like, I mean, like you're playing well, it because it's the truth. What is also the truth is that um, if you want to say that I'm unlicensed, that's not true either. The uh, state of Nevada has ruled that I have every right to uh, provide faith based counseling. And they they ruled that because they would have been in a lot of trouble if they hadn't, because it's it's the U.S. constitutional right. Whatever so happened I'm with not, that? Whatever happened with the identity theft case? In Spokane. Washington. Identity theft case. Spokane. The one where you would run the credit cards? Spokane, Washington. Because Mr. Weiss gave me the credit card. He hired me to do something and didn't want to pay for it. And I thought, and then he, um, Mr. Wise, um, had a friend of his who was actually a fake detective uh, try to charge me. And eventually the judge laughed at it. it was, he tried to put a felony against me. Eventually, because I got sick of driving back and forth to um, get going back and forth to Washington, which is 800 miles. Yeah, that's ridiculous. To a very minor, um, to a very minor uh, misdemeanor. That was a deposition. I've never, never heard any more from him. So you, you pled guilty to a, what, a misdemeanor? Yeah, a very minor misdemeanor. Tell me. Right there. If you want, I would suggest that you um, get the transcript and see what the judge has to say about Mr. Mize. Mr. Wise, rather, and his uh, fake detective, because that's exactly what he called them. Fake detective. I, I've known I've known Dan, uh, um, gosh, for a couple of years now. Um, I, I don't I haven't heard about it. So why don't you ask? A, uh, why don't you uh, uh, request a transcript from the case? Be, be, if you want to be fair. Well, I, I think yeah. I think that's I think that's great. I mean, I I, I wonder. Um, I'll, I'd have to go out to go on and get the court reporter to write up the, um, thing. you know, you should come on the podcast. How about we get the transcript? I'd be happy to do that. At okay. some future date. I'd be happy to do that. That's all. What, so what are you, what are you doing now? I'm, I am a faith-based counselor in, uh, Reno, Nevada. As I have been since, uh, September of 2015. Ask him about the newsletter and the, I, and the radio station. Yeah, I have a question. I we went to your um to your radio station. Sure. Um, but there's nothing up. Like there's no, there are no recordings. There's nothing. Everything's been taken down. 
nothing's been taken down. There's still a live station there. We just switched. Um, we're in the process of switching providers from radio.co to another company called Live 365. But but the station is on 24 hours a day, 24 seven. You can listen to it. Okay. What what which what is it? What's the what's the handle or what do they call it? What's it called again? Format is K Doc Radio. Foreign about the doc. K Doc. Cool. Okay. Hey. So. I also went on a, um, a website where somebody had said, so well, actually there were several, there was one back in August of this year where they had said that you had provided, you, they'd given you money and you were supposed to help someone with uh, their court case and then you never provided them anything. Um, no, I guess they were, they were mistaken. I have provided them and I have the treatment notes for every client that I've ever had. I have uh, legitimate treatment notes for them. And uh, although I can't, you know, obviously, since of HIPAA rules, I, I can't make them public. But if they want to sign a release, I'd be happy to do so. Well, I mean, there's a, there's a, there's a, there's quite a few, you know, there's quite a few issues of people saying that you're a liar, and like, by by the way, li and, and listen, mostly these are mostly people who unfortunately had criminal charges, and sometimes people, um, people like Mr. Wise, who spent considerable time in prison. I get it. Uh, I get and, it, and and poses as a poses as a fraud to people saying he can get them lesser federal right. sentences, which he can't. Right. Um, and uh, he hired me to do something. I tried to do it for him, and uh, he didn't want to pay for it. That's really right. What it boils down to it. Right. So, um, I, I actually just to correct you, he he's not posing as a fraud. You're saying he's posing as as something that he's not, and he's actually a fraud. So he's not posing as a fraud. You're saying he is a fraud, but, but I, but I understand what you say, what you're, what you're saying. I, I so here's the thing. Like I, I actually was in federal prison myself. Well, so, I never have been in well, any don't, oh, don't worry. It's, ask him, ask him about his arrest for, pro, for buying prostitutes cars with bad checks. It's, it's fine. Um, so I, here's it's what, fine, I, but I never have been. well, I understand, but there's time. So what I'm saying to what I'm asking you is that, Although I was a con man for a long time, like I, I didn't rack up the amount of people that are irritated, were irritated in the, the amount of articles and investigations from, you know, news organizations until basically all of my scams were public. What I'm just wondering is like, with all of these little tiny kind of scams, cause they're, cause they're minor. Like, how are you, how have you not ended up in, in, in prison yet? because what i've done is not illegal i've seen people when i did it they said it was illegal when i i have provided people actual services and if you can prove otherwise you should do so I, oh, I have so that's the loophole i saw them in per, i saw them in person and i provided them services and uh you know it'd be like saying a lawyer because they didn't they got you you had to plead guilty that the lawyer was was doing something Asking what type of chemical dependency degree a is. doctor or someone else if you if you get cancer and the doctor tells you you get cancer and you sue them it's ridiculous i provided the services and the thing you're referring to is that pissed off uh is that what you're referring to the pissed off um, yes uh, website yes you know, that, that is a fraud as well they, they send you notices saying we won't publish this if you give us money how many frauds, how many current people are currently trying to smear your name? I have no idea. I don't, I've never, to tell you the truth, and this is the honest truth, I've never even looked at the ABC News uh, thing that pu was published eight years ago. I've never, um, I've never so, I've refused to look at any of those other things. I occasionally, seven years ago. On the pissed off thing, I, I just simply tell the truth that uh, these people, um, paid for a service. I provided the service for them and they try to say that I'm not licensed, but I am. Um, and so I just confront the lies with the truth. So th this and is, I'm happy to do And I'm happy to tell the truth on your show. I got to go right now because I've got some business to do, but if you'd like to set up a, a interview, I'm happy to do a live interview with you anytime you want. He's good. You're good. Thank you very much. All right. Well, you, I understand you got a victim waiting. All right. See you. Thanks. Tell Dan I said hi. Okay, we'll do. <laughs> what a great guy, Dan! I yeah, like I'm it telling all you, that. this is he, he. He will double down, bro. He will just stick to his guns. Um, he's he's gotten he's has no license in the field of helping people with DSM fives, yeah. uh, chemical dependency evaluations. He's not able. He's not licensed by any state to do so. 
Uh, I think that's the problem is he's basically saying, if you can prove otherwise, go ahead and do it. And the problem is, is nobody's nobody's willing to spend the money to go after this guy. Well, and, and the fraud is that he's saying that they hired me to do this and I did it. Like if you're unlicensed. OK, so you're unlicensed. And maybe that's a civil case if they can track him down. He's in multiple states. Right. So, it, you know, most of the state, these organizations don't work well together. Like, hey, if you're the if you're in the Department of, of Banking and Finance in Florida, you don't necessarily, you, you know, and your your people are not being the Floridians are not being defrauded as a result of, let's say, a, a banking regulations or something. But in Georgia, they are like there's not no reason for Florida to do anything. So he's kind of going back and forth over state lines, yeah, which is muddies it. He's also providing a service. So what he's able to say is, your honor or whoever's investigating, like I provided the service. They're not happy with the service, but that doesn't mean that it's fraud. It's not fraud. They're just not happy with the service I provided. Right? Like yeah, it, it <clears throat> I don't know that it's not fraud though, because he's posing he's it's like it's like if I came to you and said, and you're you're pretending to be a doctor that has credentials to perform a substance abuse evaluation that can be some like even the court, this is how bad the courts are. The courts, uh, and the courts no longer send him business, by the way, they've stopped because they found out he was, he didn't have any actual credential, <clears throat> but he poses as somebody that has these credentials and then he generates a report. But the problem is, is the report is not, it's like getting a diploma. It's like if I wrote a diploma and gave it to you, the diploma offers nothing that you can use anywhere. Uh, and I don't know if he's got people signing some some fine print somewhere running the con, <clears throat> but I do believe, and you 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 know this, that if the federal government decides to step in, I'm sure there's plenty of muddy water that they could create a nice nice indictment on this guy. Uh, there just hasn't been eyeballs that have looked at him yet in that under that telescope microscope. Uh, bro, I love that he doubled down. I told you he, that's, he that's why him. it's like hard to interview him because he's just, he won't admit it. He it's it's, he says it with such conviction that he believes it. Well, you know, my client was in prison and he ran his credit card for another $1,500 and said the client gave him permission. The client didn't even know anything about this until after the fact. Did, did you, um, did you know Marcus Shrinker? <clears throat> mm. No. He, he had jumped out of an airplane, tried to fake his own death. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He he was the same way you could. It was almost impossible to paint him into a corner. And, and, and he would just he just double down. He just keep lying and lying and lying. And he literally would do he would. One time I literally went to him with all the documents and I was writing. I wrote a book on him called a uh, bailout. It's, it's really interesting. If anybody wants to buy it, it's on. It's on Barnes. It's a Barnes and Noble's website. You can buy it. We'll drop so, a link in the video for it. Nice. So he, Marcus Shrinker, I, one time I went to him and I had, you know, he was, he was a pathological liar and he was always doubling down and always just spinning and spinning. And one time I went to him and I said, look, Marcus, like, so at this point, this is when, like, as we were writing the, the, I was doing the, the outline, I was kind of expanding on the outline. I said, okay, so at this point you were being sued. And he goes, I said, tell me about that. And he goes, Matt, I was never sued and I, and I, but I'm used to this. So I right. went, you were never sued. He goes, no. I said, was your company ever sued? No. Was, were you ever sued on behalf of the company? And he goes, Matt, you would think I would know if I was sued. And I said, you know, you would think. And I, so I pull out one of the lawsuits and I go, boom, here's mutual life insurance company. They sued you for $1.5 million. And he looked at, it, he goes, well, where did you get this? And I go, I ordered the Freedom of Information Act. I got it from them, you know, from the, de it was the uh, insurance, right. whatever department and, you know, um, and the state. And so he looked at it and he goes, oh, oh yeah. Okay. No, no. Oh, I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I was sued here. You're right. I was sued here. He goes, no, they sued, but they sued my company. I go, no, they sued the company and you on behalf of the company and you individually. And he goes, oh, okay. Now I understand. Yeah. Yeah. I was sued here. And I said, were you sued any other time? He goes, no, Matt, this is it. And I go, really? Are you sure? No more lawsuits? He goes, no. Boom. Threw out another one. This is, you know, whatever. ABC law, uh, a lawsuit from ABC insurance company. He goes, uh, um, um. so he starts to stammer. I pull out another one and another one. I said, Marcus, do you want me to pull out all the lawsuits? He looks at me and he goes, he goes, okay, now I understand. And I go, 
I, he said, now I see it, why you're confused. I go, I'm confused because you're lying to me. And he goes, okay, now I understand. He said, Matt, of course I was sued. I owned a, a large wealth management company. We were sued all the time. It would be strange if we weren't sued. Just like that, in, within a minute, he went from we were never sued to we were sued all the time. And then he started telling me, he's a, like, this lawsuit, here's what happened. He starts telling me about the lawsuit. Like people don't understand the depth of, of just how disturbed people are. And that's, that's this guy, you know, I, I think he's, 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 I mean, he's been telling these lies for, you know, I don't know how long he's been in this, but let's say since the eighties, he's been doing this. So he's been telling the same lie for, you know, 40 years. Um, he's gotten really good at sticking to a story and unless you're unless he's forced with a with a with, you know in a courtroom where his bullshit doesn't matter he can just sit there and lie and not take any accountability um i mean check fraud check fraud uh, <laughs> these are all the charges these are all of his yeah these check look at all fraud. these charges he's never been in trouble before these are all fucking felonies bro look at felony 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 he says he's not a convicted felon he did go to jail and here's where so the fine print on there says he could be suspected of potential uh, sex offense, but we don't know if that's true or not. So we'll we'll just skip past that. Um, but then it's got a bunch of other. Hold on, so let me get past this bullshit. So these are social profiles, in case anybody's looking for them online. All all, all of this is uh, in the link. Um, but then it also has. I think he's got a bunch of. Here we go. Um, Unless I already passed it. Business contacts. He owns that. That's the one you saw, right? At Harmony Mountain Treatment Services. Yeah. See, it says Santa Rosa, California, but it's not in California. Um, business profiles. These are all the different addresses that he has businesses supposedly listed. I think it, these are probably, if I had to guess, these are probably either PO boxes or like UPS stores. Corporate mm -hmm. filings. Um, these are businesses that he supposedly owned, but it's got on here. It should have uh, licenses. As we can see, there's no licenses. If he had a doctor in anything or an MD or any type of uh, that, that, that would be listed in a background search. Here we go. Possible bankruptcies. Look at, here we go. This, this is fun. Um, he's got this one right here. Bankruptcy for, okay. There's a $325, nothing big, $325 lien. $6,500 lien, $1,100 lien, an $1,100 lien, $10,500 lien, a judgment for the amount of $12,000 $12, judgment. Yeah. Another, Here's another one. Another one. Here's another one for $1,900. He's got another judgment for $1,200. Assets. So if you're looking to get anything, according to the records, he's got no assets. Um, but yeah, and he'll sit here and tell you he's got no felonies. This is what I'm saying is he he flat out told you that the judge threw it out and that, oh, I only I, I got tired of going back and forth. He never once came to Spokane. Everything he had to do was over the phone and Zoom and things like that. He pled guilty because if he didn't plead guilty, he was going to go to jail for at least a year. So they gave him a suspended sentence for pleading guilty to two felony counts of, of uh, uh, identity fraud. Um, and if that would have been the feds, it probably would have been aggravated at Denny fraud and he would have had a minimum of two years in prison. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, the time is expiring for him because he does this. It's not 19 fucking 80 anymore, Richard. We now live in the dawn of the internet where it's very easy to tie somebody down. There's nowhere. You can't just keep opening up different names and creating different aliases. Uh, you know, it's just, it's a real ugly crime. And again, I, I come back to, you know, people can change, people can reform and, you know, he'll sit here and try to say that I'm a con, I'm a scam, knowing that I, that I help thousands of people. And I'm not going to say he's never helped anybody. I, I, I don't know that he has or hasn't, but when you're creating documents with the purpose of helping somebody get through a very, very tough time when it's substance abuse related or mental health related, and you're taking their money and defrauding them and you've got these poor people uh, I wish you would have dug in a little bit more about the halfway houses. You know, he's these people relapsed. That's why they got kicked out. I mean, it's he's a not gonna say that, but he's not going to, he's not going to admit. Yes. 
I knew I was being evicted. They were being evicted. I took their money because the the people that the people were saying they gave him the money, not the right. court. Right. That woman said it was like they gave him the money, and he'd actually been served an eviction notice prior. Right. To receiving them. So on Monday, you're given an eviction notice and you're taking money from people on Wednesday, yep. knowing they're going to be thrown out. He could have at least hired a fucking foreclosure company or something to fight it, to let these people stay in there, but literally took money. One lady paid, what was it? A thousand something dollars. And then got kicked out the next week living in her car. Yeah, living uh, in her And car. she wasn't a spring chicken. She looked like she was probably 60 years old. Um, I mean, it, it's, it's so, it's just so grimy, dude. It's so grimy. And he has not learned one lesson from this entire process. He just doubled down, doubled down, doubled down and backs up his lie. And he will. He'll come on here and talk to you. Um, and hopefully he will. Maybe it'll incriminate himself further. So if this ever gets used for any for any court proceedings. But uh, yeah, man, I, I'm glad you're going to post this because this is going to be a match channel and my channel. Uh, because he was like, go ahead do your little video recording RDAP Dan with your three followers. Oh, oh, that's what, Oh yeah. You gotta say that when he called, you called him to, to tell him. I sent him a message. I said, Hey, I'm, we're going to be doing a video on you. The, the guy that actually sent me some of this information was going to do the video too, but we decided uh, to, cause it's more interesting talking to somebody about this. And I decided to keep him silent so he can continue to extract information from uh, Dr. D bag. Um, and then when he said, go ahead and put it on your YouTube channel with your whole three followers, I felt, you know what, let me reach out to Matt. Cause Matt's got a couple more than three <laughs> followers. So, uh, so yeah, I think this will bring some attention. So guys, please, if you've been taken advantage by this guy or feel like you've been taken advantage and you've done anything like filing a police report, or you're trying to get your money back or you want some resource, there's a link in the description of this video where you can fill out a form. We'll gather all this information and we'll put it in the hands of, of the right legal departments. What do you want all to right. add to this, Matt? They, I, I'm not going to sit here and listen to you talk bad about a, a physician who's clearly <laughs> trying to help people. <laughs> <laughs> I, I refuse to, to listen to this. A oh, man, man. This a is man who dedicated his life to helping people. Fuck um, 12 years of schooling. And you're just flippantly talking bad about him. It's not 12, right. Dan. Twelve years of eating cereal and taking the cracker box at the end and calling it a degree. Um, yeah, that's uh, who, who, you know who. What other doctor isn't there? Is it Doctor Phil's not a real doctor? Is he? Is he? Like, there's one of these doctors that are like Doctor So and So. Like, and how he's are not you a real allowed doctor? to put doctor in front of your name if you're not a fucking doctor? I just don't like, understand. That's what this. Kills me. I'm gonna start telling people, Doctor Doctor Ardap here. Yeah, Dr. Dan. Dr. Dan. It's already a joke. Shelly's dad, because I went to prison for working at the uh, the pain clinic that was run by a doctor. So once I went to prison, it was like, tell Dr. Dan I said hi. So, yeah, I'm already Dr. Dan. I don't know if he really talks like that or not, but, you know. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I don't have anything else. It's, it's yeah. good stuff. It is good stuff. So I'll send you his. Well, you have his phone number. You just send him a text and see if he'll if he'll agree to do a video. And if he does, I would love I would love to. Uh, we should get the trick. Can you get the transcripts? Oh yeah, let's yeah. get the transcripts, and I'll be like, yeah, we'll order the. They're they're free. They're free. Uh, Spoke hands great with that. It might be like fifteen bucks. It was a, you know. But yeah, I still. I mean, I have the. He sat there and said how I had a fake detective. It was the fucking Spokane County detective from <laughs> Spokane City. <laughs> He's, he's like Dan's friend. This is how disconnected this weirdo is, man. Um, so yeah, hide your children, hide your wives. Uh, if you need substance abuse help, don't go out to him. Go to either your local, go to your court, have them refer you somebody. Reach out to me. We'll put you in contact with somebody. But stay away from this guy because he's Wouldn't just going to make your life a lot worse than it already is. It would be great to be if I could really. I wonder if he'd really. Do, I can't answer the phone. He talked to me. He'll probably come on the podcast. I think he will. I think he's that that sure of himself that he could talk his way out of a paper box paper bag that uh that he'll probably come on and try to defend his shenanigans that'd be great to be able to say hey and have his have his police record here this is a felony this is a felony this is a felony this is a yeah it, you know you said that this is what they said on court boom this is what happened you actually pled to this that that detective you said was fake well i have exactly the detective's what? name the, de the detective emailed him 
and cc'd me on it and said i assure you dr Differenderfer, i am i am very real and there's a there's an investigate he responded back have your superior call me it's like motherfucker you're not the one in charge here um so yeah he just lives in a in a uh, the land of delusion and somebody is going to pull the curtain on him and if he's lucky it's going to be the courts or the legal system if he continues this way it's going to be somebody's son or somebody that he just ruined their life and they're going to come and knock in and he may not be home his wife might be home he's putting a lot of people in danger by by living his life like this very reckless very reckless sir that's all i got all i care about is it's good entertainment it's just good content that's what i'm concerned this is this one's a good one. So we'll see. We'll have to this will we'll keep looking. We'll keep doing it. Let's go ahead and let's, let's do a Matt Cox sign off. Yeah. Hey, hope you all appreciate that. I can't even do I it. Because you're you're because you're, you're, you're super you're, you're very reserved and you're very you're, you know what it is? You're very um I don't want to say genuine because I'm genuine, but I'm genuinely always a knucklehead. You're very serious and 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 poignant and you you want people to, you know, you're trying to help people and you're trying to do like all these things I'm not trying to do. You're trying to be like a good person and a nice person and everything. Oh, you're, I, Matt, you're, 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 would you text me yesterday, Matt? Hold on. We, we got Listen, that. But that's all by accident. Matt that's said, all accidental. In real life, I'm a big teddy bear. That's, that's pretty much what you said word for word, Matt. You said a Matt. big softy. Oh, a big softy? A big, a big in T-Rex. The, in the morning, I text people. Christmas songs. He sure as shit does. But I didn't do it this morning. I haven't done it yet. I haven't done t- today's yeah, the first. You didn't see me one today. What's going I on? Are you on drugs or something? You relapse? I don't know what's going on, man. Today is the first. <laughs> today is the first day I haven't done it yet. I'm gonna do it. And I re- I've remembered several times, but I've been in the middle. So like I remembered here this. You time. sent me yesterday uh, "White Christmas" from the Drifters. The day yeah. before that, you sent me "Christmas Carol" playlist. The day before that, you sent me Christmas music featuring Bing Crosby and Frank Sinatra, Jingle Bell Rock, um, yeah, Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer, every day. Classic. You know what? And it's actually the classic. I like getting it because I wake up earlier. In the, I've been getting up earlier in the morning. I take my dog for a walk and get my mind right. And all of a sudden, I hear, uh, except my AirPods in, you have a message from Matt Cox. And it, I'm like, oh, boy. What am I? And I don't even look. I just hit play to see what it is. And then I, Shelly was with me. She's like, what are you laughing at? I'm like, listen to this. This is what Matt sends me every morning. And she asked if he was okay. I was like, no, no, no. He did this last year too. This is completely normal. But uh, yeah, man, I love it. I love that you do this. I think you're, you're fun. Um, you, you're just, you're, you're a fucking character for sure. But you're also the same character in real life. All right, I'm going to sign off. That's enough gloating All for right. me. His head's too fucking big. We got to let him catch up there. Hey, it's Matt Cox. And um, I appreciate you guys watching. And we're gonna we're gonna check back in with uh, Dr. D. Uh, hopefully, in a, maybe maybe a few weeks, maybe get him on the podcast. That would be super cool. Uh, if you like the video, do me a favor and hit the subscribe button, hit the bell so you get notified of videos like this. Leave me a comment in the comment section if you like this video. I'll try and respond. I respond to most of them. And uh, also, I have a Patreon. Uh, there are book links in the description. I don't know what's going on here. I got some sun coming in. I thought I closed the blinds, but there's actually a crack. It's fine. And um, what else? What else? Oh, share the video. And yeah, bro, I appreciate appreciate you guys watching. See ya.